introduce Ray. Uh, Ray is a clerk at Henley and Narden Parish Council. Um, he is officially a trained electronics engineer and has run his own uh, successful companies in electronics engineering. And he has said that's very boring in his own words. So he's always had a, a hobby in the arts, um, particularly Amdram and writing. He's published uh, professional, uh, produced plays and has been on the professional stage and previously has written a book, but he's also written a book in, uh, since he's become a clerk uh, called The Improper Officer. So uh, we're going to hand over to Ray to, to uh, yeah, get some insights into his new book. Right. So over to you, sir. Thank you very much, John, and uh, welcome to all of you that attending. Uh, I hope you've got your fans working in the background, uh, although it's a little bit cooler here in uh, Henley and Arden. Um, yeah, uh, the book um, uh, came late in life uh, to clerking, obviously, as John mentioned, uh, after a boring career in electronics and uh, appalled, uh, I think is the word I would use for what I found to be available to the novice clerk when I first of all took on the mantle, uh, even with a little bit of uh, support from a local government association, you were turned around uh, through 360 degrees and pushed out through the door to go and find your own way around. It was a little bit alarming and rather appalling. Um, when you sit down and look at the stats and you appreciate that of the 9,000 or so clerks that are working in the UK, uh, turning over 600 million pounds worth of taxpayers' money, which is the equivalent to McLaren Formula One turnover. It's alarming to think that the base training and opportunities available are, are to say, scarce would be an understatement. All of the publications were 10 to 20 years out of date. The very best one I found, which was a, an SLCC publication, had gone out of print. And obviously, when you go to your government uh, associations, they just point you to legal notes or, or basically say download the, the statute, which is terrifying. Uh, because as a clerk, you know, you, you, you're not ready for that amount of uh, legal text. So uh, whilst I was taking Silka, I made copious notes just to keep my brain from boiling over. And when I look back on the notebook, it, 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 the book had written itself uh, because it contained all my witty sort of uh, observations, if you wish, about the inadequacy of, uh, uh, of what I was doing as uh, a, you know, a trainee clerk. So uh, an improper officer, it, it's a great little title because at one of the seminars I went on, uh, the lecturer said, hmm, proper officer. I've always wished in life that I could have met an improper officer, which I thought was amusing because I'm trying to tell you, particularly if you're new to the industry, where you should avoid being an improper officer. We, we see too much malarkey down at Westminster and uh, I think a little book like this, which is harmless but, but effective, uh, is, is something you should have in your, in your attaché case. So uh, there it is, uh, how to avoid being an improper officer. Well, uh, I've, I've broken it down into 10 broad sort of sectors, uh, running through job stuff right through to your representation in the world of uh, local governance. Uh, I don't want to get too much soapboxy on that one, but it would be lovely to have your feedback on what you feel uh, your representation is. There was an announcement yesterday by the government saying that public sector workers were going to be awarded this, that and the other. I'm sure a lot of clerks must have thought, does that mean me? I'm in the public sector, you know, am I going to get 5%? So, you know, are we being treated uh, seriously uh, by those who would uh, say they represent us, a bit controversial. So moving on job stuff. Um, 
a lot of councils, particularly small village councils, don't think that employment law applies to them. It's a sort of handshake over the uh, pub counter with, uh, you know, the chair and a job done. No, uh, I was on the end of a, a particularly onerous contract uh, and working with the internal auditor, who you should work with as regularly as you can. They're good guys. Uh, we managed to pull the contract into some form of uh, uh, sense, sense and uh, rationality. Uh, lots of figures have to be in that contract. The book deals with that very thoroughly. In fact, it's the biggest section of the book. So make sure that you know the contract that you've been given, if indeed you've been given one, uh, is legal. That's the very first thing you do. So moving on to new territory, this is the scary bit. Depends on the size uh, of your ward, the size of your uh, you know, community. Obviously big city uh, situations I don't deal with. It's a world apart from me. I deal strictly with tier one, which is your little local governments and you're open to the district councils for guidance. Um, all uh, clerks retiring are not very helpful. <laughs> They're either fed up and don't can't be bothered to tell you anything, or uh, they want to leave you to struggle in the way that they did. They feel it's a bit of a, you know, blood, sweat, and tears apprenticeship. So they're not very forthcoming in 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 setting you up with. Uh, in many cases, a seamless uh, takeover from their duties. So, you know, make sure you know where everything is. Uh, you know, I've got a lockup in, in Henley, a lockup garage, uh, where files share space with sandbags and flood warning signs. Get to know where all your, I'll call them assets, uh, are located. Uh, you'll feel more comfortable. List them if you can. Uh, and, and try to update, uh, you know, anything you regard to be your assets. Uh, asset registers a much bigger subject, but it's in the book. Okay, so get to know your territory. Um, knowledge goes without saying. Training, training, training. You know, scribe are doing it. Uh, there are many, many other, uh, you know, uh, companies that are attached to local governments that will help you. Uh, it, silk is the go-to, um, uh, no doubt about it. Um, it's all done online, so it's something you can uh, join in with and become uh, quite engrossed with, as I did. Um, uh, you know, the, the idea really, the knowledge, I'm, I'm calling it, just like London cabbies, is that you know where to find things. Um, you can't know everything, but if you know where you might find out more information from, will help you and, and ultimately will help the councillor that's raised it or the member of the public. So the knowledge is not so much filling your brain with facts, figures and so on, but you know the idea that you know where to source your information from. And I would ask local government associations to probably mount more seminars or webinars on sourcing. Um, you know, where do you go for this? Oh, I've got the pavement's cracked. Who do I go to for that? So, you know, the knowledge is a very important. Time. Know your way around your parish, okay? Right, um, moving on, your crew. Um, I don't know if that's a, a kind uh, sort of, uh, com, you know, noun for a group of people such as councillors, but they are a crew. Uh, you work with and for them all of the time. Uh, it is they ultimately that make all the big decisions or all of the decisions, not the big ones and the small ones. You advise, you help, but more importantly, you take an interest in them. You know, uh, I, I mentioned a little thing in the book, Bert Smith, God bless him. Um, you know, Bert's passionate about his allotments. Uh, try and share a bit of that passion, go up to the allotments with him or join in the prize giving on the biggest marrow competition. You know, he'll feel 
uh, that he's got value. And also you are meeting the people he manages, the allotment holders, who are after all uh, ratepayers. So get to know your crew and that extends from the crew out into the public domain. Get to know your residents, get to know your associations, your groups, uh, most important. Not thoroughly, but your fingertips, uh, so that if something crops up, you know where to direct information to, whether it be internally in the council or out into the, uh, the congregation or the, uh, the public at large. So know your crew, understand how they tick. Okay, um, party gate, ooh, you know, um, we've seen the fall of a prime minister. When we look back in this incident in 50 years time, we'll all scratch our heads thinking, you know, what happened? It was just a few drinks in a cabinet room or a whatever or whatever. Whatever your politics, people will look back on this and think, how on earth did a premier leading government in, in the world get itself in such a, a ridiculously uh, farcical uh, mess, which created a path for the downfall of uh, Boris Johnson? Don't think Westminster has sway in this. It's, as a clerk, you have that. You're CEO of the council, you're the proper officer, Without being hard and dictatorial, try and keep your councillors on the straight and narrow. Uh, and that's not just in the chamber. You know, if you've gone up to the allotment, you know, and, in, and you see Mr. Smith misbehaving, have a word with him. Say, you know, they're not the sort of thing a councillor should be doing. In other words, I call it the Nolan sisters. Uh, that's for my own, uh, you know, benefit. Um, when I, it was first mentioned to me, I thought, what are, you know, five Irish girls doing writing uh, etiquette laws for, for local government? Well, there you are. Uh, they're all there. Uh, the Nolan principles are something if Boris had kept to, he may still be prime minister. So uh, avoid party gate. Ah, Agar. Uh, usually strikes fear into most clerks. Why? I don't know. Um, it's accountability. You're screwed up by the fact that you're scrutinised by really three sets of people. First of all, your council, who are obviously interested in what you're up to with the uh, accounts. Secondly, your internal auditor. Uh, my internal auditor is a Rockweiler, uh, no stone unturned. Uh, but, you know, use him, use her. They're there, they're part of the team. Don't regard the IA as your enemy. He's not. He's there to keep you and the team on the road. Um, and then finally, you've got the external auditor uh, who make money for nothing, basically, appointed by the government and can only ever give opinions. They're not going to bang you up in jail. But if your counsel has been wayward, uh, they, their opinions will say so. And they will expect that having given their opinion, you do something about it. Because next year they'll hammer you. You know, it, it, it really is keep your books straight. Um, I've no great tips. Uh, I've been talking to John and he'll hate me saying this uh, about some software that groups all of this stuff together, makes it, you know, a one entry uh, running uh, record uh, of and your income and everything else. That's another thing. So in the book, all laid out, all the forms that you need to fill in are shown uh, and guidance on each of them. So best of, best of luck next, uh, next uh, financial year. Uh, grants, lovely bit, love grants. Um, love to see the look on people's faces when we hand them a check or whatever we do. Uh, but watch out. The warnings are, and it's a beautiful word, commensurate. It means in line, in keeping with, if you wish. Uh, and I cite an example of, uh, you know, giving too much money to too small a group that offer very small benefit for a small number of residents. You'll get caught out very, very quickly. On the other hand, be careful. Don't set too many heavy precedents with those that you do make grants to. 
because they'll expect it every year. Uh, make sure that your criteria for uh, being given a grant is clear, simple, not legalistic, easy to read. They have to produce a little bit of proof that they've got funding coming from other areas. They have to be viable, uh, looking after their bank account and so on. But it's a lovely, it's one of the best jobs that Clark has, you know, saying, oh, uh, it, it, I react as if I'm almost giving the money out of my own pocket. So I love granting. But watch for the pitfalls. It's all in the book again. Community, I call them the most important asset of any council. They are what it's all about. Uh, they're tiresome, uh, they're controversial, argumentative, uh, unthinking, uh, but they're what you expect to have to confront when you take on the job of Clark. And you are the conduit between they, the community, and your council. So you hope that you put their case clearly, that the council make a very clear, uh, uh, you know, decision, and that they benefit from, uh, you know, that course of action. Um, again, just like your crew, get to know them. Take the time to go to the Evergreens meeting once every Martlemas. Uh, just to make an appearance there really gives a thrill to uh, the older people that have assembled there. They feel they're being looked after. Similarly with youth clubs and skate parks, be, be, be apparent, be seen around and, uh, you know, you'll get known um, and, you know, they'll find it easier to approach you if they need help. So elections, uh, I've popped this in because it's actually now really that parish clerks and town clerks are beginning to gird the loins for uh, the local elections next May, I think it is. Um, it's when the old crew either stand again to be elected, walk away saying never again, or you know, you, you're faced with getting a completely new uh, crew uh, of councillors. So you've got to be at the head of the publicity campaign that pushes forward, that collects likely candidates, give them all the tips and information they need, show them how they get their posters uh, designed and printed for when they start to canvas. A lot of work and of course um, expense because your district council will be, uh, for every elected uh, person, there'll be a cost uh, attached. Uh, and so make sure you've got it in your budget uh, when you conclude that in sort of November, December this year. Look at how many people you could be uh, paying for in a, the election process and make sure it's in your budget. So just a little bit of uh, warning early on that it may be May 23, but it soon comes round uh, and you've got to be prepared. Okay, and finally, uh, representation. Um, I said enough, I think, at the beginning. Um, I want to know from as many, many clerks as I uh, make contact with through Scribe and Scribe Fest, it'll crop up again. Um, do uh, clerks uh, feel that you know, SLCC and local government associations are doing enough. You know, NJC, uh, you know, pay scales. Um, is there a, a guild or an association association out there that I don't know about? Um, but I do think uh, we need to be a bit more joined up as, uh, um, if you like, as an industry, and have a little bit more clout. Uh, when it comes to negotiating our contracts of employment. But that's uh, a bit soapboxy. So <laughs> I hope I haven't rambled on too much, but I hope, um, you know, I've given you some insight. Book itself, um, it's, it's a clever little thing, really. Uh, it's a book, yeah. But it, every now and again, it, it, it points you in the right direction. Uh, to a website and you can pull down a lot more information than you can print in the book. Uh, I had uh, there Jackie Weaver, my goodness, what, what a great woman. Um, 
came into contact with her quite by accident. Uh, I told her what I was up to. She said, send me, a, send me a PDF now. Let me look at it. And she read it and edited. I didn't want her to edit it, but she did uh, in parts. And uh, I, I just thank her. She was no fuss. Uh, she is a leading figure in local government. Uh, you know, we all know that. And Partygate was all about how she brought control to a, a rather uh, a tricky bunch up, uh, up north. So, you know, I, I'm so, so pleased she's part of the book. OK, um, the, the, the publication I mentioned that's gone out of print, uh, SLCC, about 10, 15 years ago, had a colour coding thing going. I don't know whether you all recall it, but it, it, I found that great. When, you, when you're going through porridge, it, it's nice to know, you know, which colour porridge you should be looking for. Um, and I think this sort of colour coding uh, helped me with the other book. So I thought I'll, I'll put it in. So once you uh, decide which sector you want to uh, look at, whether it be roles or, or finance, it's easily found by flicking through the book and finding the colour. Uh, easy reading. Uh, I mentioned about Agar. Here you can see the displays that I've created. Uh, they show the actual forms that you use for the return and basically how you fill them in and why you fill them in. Uh, so it's simple. I've hopefully not used any jargon that would confuse. Um, a little bit leery in parts, but you know, uh, it, it helps you get through the, the, the heavy work. So easy content. And then the beautiful connection, I think, with the internet, which actually the internet or the associated website could grow enormously uh, in all sorts of directions, if you think about it, because uh, one of the things that will be on the website will be my scribe webinar uh, for those that didn't have the opportunity to, to uh, watch it. It'll be on the website and maybe then they will join the academy at some point uh, uh, to see what what further uh, is on offer. So good good website connection. Very pleased with that. Okay, um, and obviously part C, last part, is where I open up. Uh, you know the comments. Obviously, I can see that twelve is it twelve comments have been made uh, in in live webinar, you know, uh, as many as you can throw at us, because all of these uh, opinions and questions, we've still got time to alter the book to suit and, and re-edit where we feel a very important points come up. Thanks for your time anyway. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Um, really appreciate you coming again today to give an overview of your book. Um, also, kudos to you, Ray. You know, you, you've you know, identified the problem there that you've described at the beginning, and you've gone ahead on your own to try and solve it, to try and improve, I guess, yeah, improve the, the future clerks. So kudos to you to do that. Before we go to questions, you did mention Scribefest there, so I'm going to take the opportunity just to promote it to all of you. So I'm not sure if... Um, you're all aware if you've attended Scribefest before, but you know we obviously have our monthly events uh, where we have guest speakers, but we have our annual conference, which will be September the 9th uh, this year. Um, it's gonna be a fun packed event. We've got lots of good speakers. I'll go through to Jessica's blog post. She just wrote here um, with all the details. We've got, uh, yeah, we've got keynote speaker from Duncan Baker, MP of Nor Norfolk. We've got prize draws, which we will be, haven't told uh, Ray yet, we'll be buying a few copies of his book to give away in prize draws. And it's gonna be the official launch of Ray's book at the event. Um, we've got a website here, uh, scribefest-.com. I'll drop it into the chat um, where it gives an overview of all the speakers there, really good speakers, all different topics. Um, on social media, uh, making safer neighbourhoods, accessibility, web accessibility, future transport. We've got Eleanor Greenback giving an update on Practitioner's Guide. 
Um, we've got topics on carbon footprint and time management. So lots of good, uh, it's really good fun events. And also um, we're going, we've got some shanty men performing, which is quite cool. So we're hosting it in a village hall in Sheringham. The shanty men of Sheringham weren't too happy. We were taking over their space. And so we said, oh, can you perform? And they go, oh yeah, we'd love to perform. So they're very happy now. Uh, about that yeah so we're just trying to yeah hopefully it'll be a fun event it's yeah september 9th from 9 45 a.m through to 3 p.m with some breaks etc so please come along so questions well first who hands up if well oh I don't know if hands up yeah who managed to have a little a read off uh ray's book type yes in the chat if you did do that because if Gaina had a, had, a, had a read Emily Bob skimmed it Kelly oh that's good good so um what do you think start with you Gaina. yeah yeah what do you think feel free to unmike yourself put your video on Gainer and let us know or Bob or Kelly or Emily yeah I can say something I've um I worked 30 years in local government, well, 40 years in local government, 30 years in internal auditor. I want to back what Ray said there about, you know, making friends with your internal auditor. They can really help you. And I often now, now I'm, a, now I'm a town clerk, get my orders to come in halfway through the year as well. So again, you can sort of build up that relationship and they can know the, what things are going on during the year, as it were. Um, so they can pick them up at year end as well. So it's always helpful to get them on side. Um, when it comes to the external audit, don't be worried about it, but it does tend to be graduates, I think, that do it, and I think they're working for a tick sheet, so sometimes you'll get some stupid questions asked of you, you just have to take out the chin and just answer them back and be as straight as you can, I think, but obviously the more you can put in your variation explanations, the better, but even then you'll still get asked questions, because I think they have to sort of justify themselves a little bit, and it's not always the right thing to do, that's what they do in practice. Thanks, Bob. You haven't got your beer at the moment. No, no, it's got my fan though. Look at that, a brand new fan there. Oh, uh, good, good. I bet that was <laughs> Cool. Any other comments from Emily, um, Kelly, Gaynor? I'd have found it very useful. Like when I first started, um, I was a councillor and I became a clerk later on. Um, and actually, my previous clerk hadn't done anything and we didn't, I didn't know as much as I had learned very, very quickly. And this book would have been a godsend when I first started as a clerk, even as a councillor, to be honest, I know what was going on. And what should, I should have known what council should have been doing. So yes, and it was it was a good read. And it's easy to pop in and out of as well. So I didn't start at the beginning. I looked for something further on to what was going on. So yes, I, good luck. Cool. Good. Any other comments? Gaynor said she loved the humour and it's essential for clerks to have. This is this is all really good feedback. Ray, are you happy? It is, um, I, you know, um, I never thought it would be a book in, uh, during Silka, but uh, it became evident to me that uh, if I enjoyed reading my own rubbish, uh, somebody else might. Um, and it, it is, it is serious, the, the framework is serious. Um, it's just that I've knitted it together with, I, I, you know, humorous uh, stuff to keep your interest going. Um, but, you know, you take yourself back, any of you, to your first week uh, as clerk. It, it's a lonely uh, place to be and uh, you need all the help you can get. And I just hope that uh, this little book plus the internet and hopefully more professional support from Scribe eventually, we, we, we'll get something really good. Uh, I am dead interested in uh, software that takes you from, uh, if you want, the, the conception, you know, a councillor puts his hand up and says, I propose that we do this and follow that all the way through to expenditure and, and application of uh, what he was calling for. Uh, I, th I think it's not beyond the wit of man to put this a, a software package together that covers the lot. This morning, just very briefly, John, um, I was asked by the internal auditor about our uh, assets reg register, and I'm working with a company called um, XMAP, oh, yeah. uh, Ge Geo something or other, and it's 
it, it is right. It, it's good, but it's very complicated. And I can't yeah. honestly say the average clerk, God bless them, uh, would find it easy to operate. Yeah. Uh, it's things like that all in one package, you know, where your allotments are, who, who, who you know, runs the plot. How much do they pay a year? There's a great, huge scope for uh, governmental software at our level. And I'm hoping Scribe and, uh, you know, the team come up with something, you know, a lot more comprehensive than we've got now. Sorry about that, John, but I had to get hey, it in. You're giving plugs for Scribe. I, we didn't discuss this at all. We're just sharing the love, I guess. No, um, yeah, spontaneous. Yeah. We're definitely, I mean, we have asset manager in Scribe, but we're definitely, we're working on a new version of it, um, which will make it really simple and easy. And we want to create a mobile app, actually. You can just go around, take a photo of something, yeah. take the location, add basic details, and just, that can, it's almost like a treasure hunt, actually, yeah. quite fun. And then it all appear on the map, and you can then do your inspections and all that. But anyway, it's not about Scribe today, it's about Ray and his book. What um, questions? Have we got questions? Any more? Don't be shy because, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm eager for any feedback, really, honestly. No? We've got to have some questions. We have got one in the chat from Ellie. She said, um, know your crew is definitely the best advice. I keep building who I know and what they can help with. Do you know how much the book will cost to buy in hard copy? Uh, not um, not in stone yet. Um, obviously, it's hard to know what a reference book is worth. Um, the wonderful publication I keep harping back to from SLCC was enormously expensive. Uh, you've got the yellow book, the Bible, retailing at 150 quid. I think, you know, I, I'll be aiming for, well, I'm hoping that your council will buy a copy for you if I'm going to be brutally honest, although it is a personal little book, it's something you might want uh, to buy yourself. So it, it will be pitched, hopefully, at a, a figure which hopefully covers my costs uh, and makes a little bit of profit uh, so that I can go on to, uh, you know, address other publications uh, that might be needed in, in, in the future. Uh, but not, not, not going to knock your pocket for six, no. Any other? Any other, uh, ad, any improvements? Uh, anyone that read the book got some particular improvements? We've been discussing, let, let's throw it out there. Um, so me and Ray have been discussing the, like the style of it. The, um, and I was giving him some feedback this morning. I don't know what you guys think. Um, I mean, one is I wanted the cut. I was thinking when I was saying I want, I just I've just taken Ray emailed me about the book like a few months ago and I read it and loved it. And I just, you know, trying to help Ray make it as successfully as possible. And, I, um, you know, so scribe and not in partnership or anything, you know, from a commercial point of view or anything like that. It's just we're um, helping each other out. Um, yeah. So I thought the having a bright color book. Uh, the, the, you know, because a lot of the books can be grey and boring, so really bright colour, maybe yellow. And then also the illustrations don't really capture the kind of humour side of it. So I was, I was saying like revisit, uh, redoing all the illustrations to make them a bit more fun. Um, because I think like maybe also long term um, having, yes, yeah, so it's a great book, it doesn't really stand out. It's trying too, to too boring. A bit boring, a bit boring. It doesn't really show off your personality. Um, and you know, trying to attract, make it more attractive to younger people. Um, you know, who who uh you know are considering becoming a clerk um, and, and want a book that's more accessible uh to that. And also if the illustrations are more fun, they can have some nice captions, which makes it very easy to share on social media um, and promote the book, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so I was thinking that. Uh, we got it, Rose. Uh, will it be available on e-readers? Sorry, will it be available? On e-readers. So are you gonna, 
are you going to put, I mean, I know it's quite easy these days. I mean, Kindle, I think you can, on Amazon, you can publish your book for consumption via Kindle. It's something you should potentially, I don't know, had you consider it? Yeah, it's, uh, I've, uh, I've written um, a number of novels and uh, always done them in, in a paperback and, uh, you know, the Kindle. Uh, it's a very easy process. Uh, yeah, no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, it, it's another angle. Uh, I, I, again, I'm, I'm old school. I, I love the feel of a book. Like I love the feel of, uh, you know, uh, uh, 33 RPM uh, long playing record. It's something tangible, but yeah, I do understand. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it lends um, itself. I, I mean, I never buy books anymore. I always use Audible. So listening books. So it's something also, I guess all these things you can, um, that's my sister. I think we, we can, um, yeah, you can consider. Yeah, I mean, your first yeah. release, physical, but yeah, uh, ebook, probably not too hard. And then, yeah, Audible could be fun as well. Jackie says she likes the idea of bright color, easy to locate on the bookcase. Um, Emily, do you think you wrote for every parish and town council? Councils range from large towns with millions income, very small villages with a poultry sum that is mostly absorbed into wages, insurance, etc. And grass cutting. It's, yes, good point. It's, it's, it's difficult to have a one size fits all. So do you think your book is for a particular type of or do you think you, yeah? Yeah, um, hard to categorise it, but, you know, certainly uh, written, aimed at councils with a, a turnover of in excess of 25K, uh, uh, but not necessarily up to the top end, the 6 million end. Uh, I guess, um, you know, um, when I wrote it, um, I was thinking of the, strangely the Vicar of Dibley. I don't know why, but you know, yeah. uh, I you know I can remember their meetings uh, and the way they were you know pushed along by the chair and the poor guy trying to take minutes never got it quite right. You know, so I, I it was whimsy when I put the book together, but I think yeah, up to you know town councils maybe turning over a couple of million or so. Uh, when you get bigger, then the clerk is one of a, maybe a number of employees, and I'm not expert in a, a wider range of employed people at council. Uh, maybe book number two uh, will look at the higher echelons, but I don't think I'll bother. Uh, I think um, most clerks start in, in small parishes, uh, they get their silka, uh, then they're inundated with job offers from NALC and uh, SLCC, uh, and it's for them to move up the ladder. Yeah. I'm just hoping this book gives you the grounding. Yeah, if you look at the kind of, main, I think it's sensible, you've got to look at the target audience and, you know, above, I'm just having a look here now, my stats, above 400k is two three two percent yeah the local councils up to between zip well up to 25k it's 40 percent um yeah and then yeah 25 to 50k is eight percent yeah so the sweet spot is the middle you know from the 25 to 200k that's where all the action yeah. is actually, yeah. uh preset cool any more questions? Otherwise, we're going to wrap up. Uh, enjoyed this morning. Yep, been good. Cool. Otherwise, everyone have a really good day. And uh, we'll send you an email with the slides. You've got the book. We'll, we'll send YouTube video. Um, shall we wave to each other goodbye?